We have got the tallest one indeed, and I wonder how our dear friend Jerry the giraffe skull is doing. I suppose, well, I hope that it's kept nice and warm, but we also have a big male giraffe, and I'm hoping he's going to show his head for you, but at the moment, very much like the Nyala and the zebra were, he's got his head tucked in, and he's enjoying a little bit of breakfast. And I suppose it's actually just not just him that's enjoying the breakfast. If you go all the way down his very long neck, which makes him the tallest creature, he's got a couple of oxpeckers that have joined. I think there were three at one point. It looks like there's only two now. Perhaps the other one has gone to the other side. But they are happily feasting away, and they're also quite wet. And I always wonder that when the animals get wet, that the oxpeckers are feeding upon. There's the third one that I was telling you about. Does it get slippery for them? I always just find that it's amazing how they're able to hold on tight with their little clinging feet to the sides of the giraffe. It's really quite amazing. Sort of nothing really stops them. And it's amazing as well. I'm using amazing. Amazing is the word to describe oxpeckers today. How when an animal gives a good shake, that uh, it's very, very rare that they often come off. Normally they're still hanging on by their toes. You can hear them chatting. They're very happy this morning. Hello, Trav. You're going on a walkabout. Don't go on a, too much of a walkabout because I can't tell you how difficult it is to try and position the vehicle with the roof on when this giraffe moves because he's so much taller than us that often we chop his head off. So we'll just see where he is going to go. He's going to the marula tree. Hmm. Should we go and have a look at his legs for the meantime, Craig? <laughs> Let's go. We won't be able to get a view of his head from here, but I'm going to go slightly forward so we can actually see the giraffe. And something that I noticed, because we had to come past him, we had to do a loop and then turn back down again so that we could see him nicely, is that he had an injury on, on his front left leg. So I'm going to see if we can get a view of this and figure out what has happened. And I don't want to startle him. Hello, boy. Like I said, we're probably not going to see his head now, but that's okay. Mm, let's see. I don't know, Craig, I don't know if you can get that through the, that branch. That bush willow's a bit naughty. Hang on, let's do it over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to very sneakily turn in in just a moment. I'm just creeping very slowly. Actually, there we go. Can you see that front left leg? You can see that there is an injury. Aha, well done. There it is. Look at that. My goodness, that doesn't look very nice at all. It almost looks like a lion has grabbed hold of its leg and given it a few puncture marks, but of course this is not the case. I think that this injury was most likely caused from fighting with another male giraffe. And that's what happens is that they often get calluses all down the front of their legs. And that's because <clears throat> when they are using their necks and they're swinging them around and well, bashing them against each other. They also got these very powerful legs which they'll use for kicking. And like a horse, as it chops with its front legs, so does a giraffe. So you can imagine it's very easy for that skin to be taken off on the front of a giraffe's leg. So those are very common injuries to see, uh, sort of um, the lower part of the leg. They often have that. No, I'm not, I can't roll forward. But you can even see on his back leg that he's got a couple of scratches as well. But they're not fresh, and they're quite old, so he's obviously been battling some other uh, bulls for some cows. He's a lovely boy. He's lovely and mature. He's got a nice dark coat. 